episode 54 jopins what's up this episode sponsored by the timbo sugar show thank you very much jopins in the link go check out their twitch channels go check out their merch go check out their youtube shit they got it all jopins go look at their only fans the timbo sugar show get it yeah next what's next being president timbo sugar show for president Drop a little video we made for the merch, for the Can Crusher merch, right here. What up, Jovens? We're crushing some cans today, just like Sean O'Malley on December 11th. Go get your merch, sugarshow.co. Let's go crush some cans. Man, I hate cans. <laughs> Thanks for the introduction, Alfredo. Gotta be a little quicker in that, Tyrion. Get a quicker van, Andre, sucker mom. Thanks for the chetty, Eddie. Die, Cheeto, die! Die, Cheeto, die! Die, Cheeto, die! Die, Cheeto, die! Got your heart, cute Nonez. Didn't want to do you like that, Thomas. My bad. Gotta be a lot better than that, little island boy. Me and Sugar have been crushing cans since 1994, Jobins. We fucking hate them. Don't forget to recycle, too, because, you know, save the planet. But we're knocking these motherfucking cans out one at a time. Check by check. Easy by easy. Go get your fucking merch, Jobins. What's up, Jobins? It's can crushing season. And Hiva Piva, you're in Sean O'Malley's sights. You're fucked. Boom. That was fun making that, wasn't it? That was sick, dude. Yeah, we had a lot so of fun. So much fun. Yeah. It's always a good time uh, shooting with you. Mm -hmm. Like content like that. I can't wait to keep doing it. We did a good time, too, because like, we had to think about weather conditions, having it be sunny outside. Yeah, it was shitty today. Exactly. It's Sunday. Three in the afternoon. We've had quite the weekend. Mm -hmm. A lot of good food, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Got together with my family this weekend. Uh, it was a... One year anniversary of the passing of my uncle already, which is just fucking crazy how time goes fast, dude. Time it's, flies. It's been legendary, dude, on this journey with you. After yeah. Uncle Jay, was, he's a role model, dude. And then, like, him passing away and us honoring him by doing that pedal the cause mm -hmm. bike ride. It felt good, didn't it? It felt great. I want to keep doing it me every year. Me too, dude. I got to get a better bike. That fucked my hip up, dude. It really did. Mm. Two days, I was on a little bike. Uh, I wasn't sitting high up enough, apparently. I got an expert uh, cousin-in-law who's really good at knowing shit about bikes. He said I was a fuck from the beginning. But, uh, yeah, that sucked, dude. That really sucked. Mm -hmm. Those hills sucked, man. Oh, yeah. my God. It, Uncle Jay was a badass doing 37 miles. I know. Again, who the fuck does this to cancer patients put <laughs> up the fucking end up a hill? Didn't make any sense. Didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. We did it, though. It was awesome. Uh -huh. And it, it was good at a year today, like I want to keep getting it growing. I want to keep getting more people going. Cause then after you do the pedal, you can eat, get all the good food. Mm. That was good times. And then, dude, Aunt Rose fucking made all that delicious Mexican food oh, last yeah. night. The Mexican street corn, dude. That shit was delicious. Delicious uh, street corn and that stuffed uh, sh pasta shells. Oh god, mm. I was a fat boy last night. Yeah, and then she was showing us her book because she's a little older too, Aunt Rose. Mm -hmm. You know, she's been around like, and then. Her family from... Uh, I don't think you can say that about girls, dude. Oh, yeah. Well, she's experienced... I don't think you can say girls are old. That's fucked up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, her great-grandfather's from Ireland, and then it was cool to really learn about all of that family history. Like, dude, so many people have really interesting family histories, man. Everybody. Anyone with the last name of Bollinger, I guarantee is related to Pocahontas, because Pocahontas had... She got married to uh, John yeah. Rolfe oh. from Jamestown. Okay. And get this, like, that was a, a big thing back then, too, because, like, a white man. What married, was the big thing? John, uh, J James, no, John Rolfe, John Rolfe, Marion Pocahontas of the po Powhatan tribe mm -hmm. back in 1614. Mm -hmm. That was crazy because, and this is, like, Thanksgiving related. It's almost Thanksgiving, guys. Which is crazy, dude. But shit. Thursday. They had a kid named wow. Thomas Rolfe, and then he had a kid named Jane Rolfe who married a Bollinger, General Bollinger. They had, like, six kids. Those six kids had, like, six kids each. So there's so many Bollingers in the United States that are just, like, a bunch of white people named Bollinger. 
And they are all probably related to Pocahontas. Think on that. Pretty crazy. That is crazy, dude. <laughs> and then, like, with Aunt Rose, it related because, like, her family was oh, so yeah, big. Oh, yeah, little history facts from Brendan. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> That's enough on that. Just a little Thanksgiving uh, thing. Dude, you know what I'm really excited for? What is Jobin's. it? Jobins. Check out the trailer for Pam and Tommy. Dude, that looks so good. It sucks it doesn't come out till February. But I love, what I really love about this is the time piece of it. Mm-hmm. And I love Nick Offerman and Seth Rogen. The way they look. They look epic together. Because Nick Offerman and Seth Rogen are playing characters that had like caught the tape, right? Yeah, they're the ones who found all these tapes. They're going through them and they find Tommy Lee and Pamela and her sex tape. Which I didn't know was like that. It was leaked like that. Which back in the day, which was probably a little crazier, you know. They still got hackers today that hack all the celebrities' phones and shit. Right. Yeah, but it just kind of made me feel bad, cause I never, I, I never wondered how oh, how that get out. I just thought it, they, it just got out. You know what my like, thoughts are? If if you get able to get Seth Rogen and Nick Offerman on that project, don't you think you'd have to sign off with Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee? Oh, I'm sure they. For them to be like, yeah, that'd be cool a movie about our sex I'm sh- tape. I'm sure they're okay with it. They would probably think it's awesome. Even though who's the, the real victims here? Yeah, even though in the in the movie it's portrayed that it's really haunting to them that the sex tape gets out. Mm. I'm excited, dude. And I didn't know Sebastian Stan. I didn't know that was him until they said it on the trailer. You blew my mind because that's not a name I recognize right off the bat. That Bucky is, from all Bucky from all the so, superhero movies. The Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Bucky. Other Captain America. Other Captain America. Huh. Bucky. The iron arm guy. He lost a lot of weight for the role, man. Yeah, he does. He, he looks, looks really skinny fat. in the face. But I'm just really excited for it. I love Seth Rogen. I really love Nick Offerman. And Seth Rogen hair, the mullet, dude, that cracks my shit up. It just looks really good. And it's the same guy that did, or I think woman, maybe. Same studio or company that did I, Tanya, And that was really good. That was a good movie. I still need to see I, Tanya. You need, you I haven't watched watch it. it. I haven't watched it. I'm pretty sure it's like on HBO if you have like Charter or something. Is it? Yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah. In fact, maybe we own it, dude. You can watch that. We'll borrow it. But yeah, I'm really fucking excited for Pam and Tommy. Check that trailer out, Jobins. Another trailer that had me in my feels, Spider-Man. And I'm I'm upset because after I rewatched that trailer with you, so online, Jobins, go check out the new, the second trailer for Spider-Man. And look at the end. Uh, online, people were saying that that was Andrew Garfield saving her because he couldn't save Emma Stone in his universe. Mm-hmm. Saving and, Zendaya's Mary Jane. Yeah. And oh, when I thought, when I read that, I was like, oh my God, was it? It hit, my, it hit me in my feels. It's mm-hmm. like, oh damn, he couldn't save her in his universe. But and then he, I watched it with you and I'm like, that, that looks like fucking Tom, Tom Holland. Holland. Like, Watch, don't read. But they have a similar hairstyle. Perhaps it still is. Theory Maybe is it's still just relevant. different for the trailer. Mm-hmm. Mm. They do that stuff. I thought Suicide Squad was going to be a good movie. That well, <laughs> So trailers can be very misleading. What do you think of the new Spider-Man trailer? You're, not, you're still not excited? I'm just... Because you weren't excited for the well, first one. Well, it seems so forced to me. Like that How come? What's forced? What's forced? Doctor about? Strange. Doctor Strange is a human computer who knows all possibilities. He's a quantum computer, pretty much, in a human mm-hmm. body who mm-hmm. knows every possible outcome. And mm-hmm. he's going to do something that's irresponsible as try to change Peter Parker's past so that he doesn't have to be known as Spider-Man. What if there's a reason? What if he's got a reason? What if one of those paths he has to have this happen? You just answered your own question. Well, then the trailer is very misleading about <laughs> that because it doesn't make it seem that way. Yeah. It seems like it's Spider-Man doing his own thing. And, and it seems like Spider-Man's going to fight Doctor Strange in the all trailer. Them. All of them. So, yeah, you sh- everyone should check that out. It's a very interesting trailer. Dude, it's it's the movie I'm most excited for. And right Green now. Goblin's back in it. Doc Ock's back in it. Yeah. Sandman Oh, in dude. It. Dude. When Green Goblin. I'm nerding out, Jobins. When Green Lantern gave his little spiel in the trailer, Peter, he... You want it. You've had, what does he say? He's like, you've had, yeah. you've had trouble. I don't know, wanting everything. So it's, I'm butchered, capital butchered, but epic, epic. And William Defoe returning. Mm-hmm. Come on, dude. He's been the best Green Lantern. That other Green, the best, how many Green Lanterns have there been for you to say that? Maybe two. <laughs> it's others? the best Green Lantern. Out of three. <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> let's include some cartoon ones because that's fair. 
If you were, it's think about the MMA. If you if there's three heavyweights in the whole division, and you're like, he's the best heavyweight out of three people. Yeah, he's the best Green Goblin ever. I think so. Probably the cartoon version's the second best. That's because because you haven't given Jared Leto the role yet. No, they gave it to what's his name? What's that one guy's name? Oh yeah, I he makes terrible movies all the time too. Yeah, but he played. And the Amazing spider man is that one. What is his name? From Chronicle? He's yeah. from Chronicle, and he was the superhero kid, and he was bullied. It's been a minute. So he became like an evil kid. Yeah. And he was in the Valerian in the Thousand Cities movie where- Lawless. He was in Lawless. That was a good movie. If someone can tell me the kid's name, I would love to know, because I'm so lost. It'll hit me if we keep talking about him. Just forget about him. I know, because he'll just He makes bad too movies. Much, too much air live pod A time. Place Beyond the Pines. That's a big one that he's in. Oh, yeah, dude. Damn. Stop it. You're making me trying to think <laughs> of his name, dude. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that Spider-Man fucking sucked, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to that try one him. fucking sucked with Andrew Garfield. Fucking it really sucked. did. It really Jamie Foxx is going to be in the new one. You saw yeah. him in the trailer. Yeah, looks so good. He looks better. I think gonna Sandman's going to be in it. I'm the psyched. The lizard guy's going to be in it. I'm psyched. Yeah. Oh, now you're psyched because I got you a little excited. You do got me a little jacked again. I got gonna changed up. It's going to be good, dude. It's all Spider Man. Dude, okay. So growing up, when I was a kid, mm-hmm. I was first Batman. I love the car- Ooh, Tim Burton's. Yeah, or? all the Tim Burton Batman and animated. Yeah, and I was a little, and I was a kid when those came out, and uh, and the anime cart- Saturday morning cartoons on WB eleven. Oh gee, shit, kids today like what the fuck? Yeah, Saturday morning mm. cartoons were the OG shit, but uh, I loved Batman, and then fucking Spider Man came out, and I was obsessed with Spider Man, and I loved him ever since. He was like my favorite, and then you know. Besides Wolverine, because that's my ultimate favorite. Wolverine? Yeah. Wolverine is a badass. Yeah. That's my all-time favorite superhero. Your all-time favorite superhero is Wolverine. Yeah. Professor X kills him nine times out of ten. I don't give a fuck who kills him or not. It's just who he is as a superhero, person, everything he's been through. It's my favorite. Superman throws him in the sun. I don't give a fuck. Fuck Superman. Fuck Superman. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, Jobins, go check out the new Spider-Man trailer. All right, let's dip into this, Brendan. Let's dip into the little Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Ooh, we're getting into that. Let's get into a little controversial territory. Because, uh, you know, I'm probably going to go against a lot of things I say on this one. Just because hmm. I kind of, well, I'm a peace guy. I want peace. Same. Yeah, but in this situation, to me, this seemed like a like a one, two, three case. Like an easy one. Like boom, bada, bing. Easy. But it's drawn out to what it was. You know what I mean? It got so politicized. Yeah, because it all is because of the riots and people brought race into it. I don't want to see where race comes into it at all. I don't know. Maybe we're not reading the right things. or read. I, I try to stay out of it. Like, when you get into the negative shit in news, dude, that can consume you and just make you feel negative. So I've been trying to stay out of it. But this Kyle Rittenhouse shit's been everywhere. But here's Schmitty's take. I agree that he should be have been acquitted. And the prosecutor, he's the sto- He's the whole story because that dude was straight Hollywood. Like that guy was ridiculous. Um, Hundred. Yeah, like it was. It was to the point where it made me draw in because of the prosecutor, because of how fun he. It was funny. Comical. If, yeah. If no one, if you weren't watching that dude and sitting back and laughing. I don't know. I don't know. We're different because I was laughing at this guy, and I. It's honestly, wait until some movies get made. Who's gonna? I can't wait to see Jared Leto play that guy. Jared Leto play. If you want to talk about Jared Leto playing a guy, that's the guy Jared Leto plays. I actually love that idea. Because I think that would be kin- sick, <laughs> with like the spike gelled hair yeah. and the glasses. He yeah. would kill it. Man, that whole case was crazy. Like you're saying though. Yeah, but uh, the whole thing's crazy because. The situation was dumb. What's the situation at the end of the day? People were rioting and destroying property, right? Yeah. Should we not if – now, I guess he had to go travel. But if we're the United States, right, and people are rioting and destroying our country, don't we have the right to stand up for that? But there's the thing. the Like what you're allowed – when to give le- lethal force. Mm-hmm. Like how the guy was saying, there was points. Like you don't shoot someone if they're destroying a car and they have no weapon. You don't shoot them and kill them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But 
in Kyle's situation, he was going to get hurt. And it was Mm self-defense. It was complete self-defense. Was everyone there is you're in the wrong place at the wrong time and you're in danger Mm -hmm. in any of those situations. You should know. If you're a protester, you should know there's smug little pricks that are 17 with guns that can kill you. (laughs) You should be smart and not do stupid shit that gets you shot. Yeah. Because the kid is acquitted. I agree he's totally innocent. He had a gun, playing self-defense. These people were attacking him. Yeah. Hey. If you want to do some protesting, be ready for a 17-year-old prick, smart with kid with a f- who thinks he's a badass with a gun. He's going to kill your yeah. ass. Play with fire, you get burned. Play with fire, you get burned. And that's unfortunate. It's an unfortunate situation. And that's my intake on it. If my kid was a protester, I would say this to him. If you get killed, I will not be surprised because they have the right to fucking do that to you. I'd probably You're going to burn my, a business? Yeah, I'd probably buy my kid... I'd probably teach my kid the like respectful way to protest and voice your opinion. Hundred. And then me as a parent, I would probably have to teach them gun safety and have them strapped and have them really know when to use a pistol. And on top of that, I got to have them have fucking a bulletproof chest vest mm-hmm. because I don't want them to get right. Ra- if they get shot by a random crazy person, now they have a chance to get protected. That's if you l- allow that's a tough situation what if you got like an 18 year old kid who's really political and wants to be there in these riots i would and say to this if you burn a local business of someone who's been working their whole life to be their own boss and do their own opportunities mm-hmm. and live the american dream as much as they can try to achieve it mm-hmm. and you try to burn that shit down and you get killed mm-hmm. i won't bat an eye i'll be like you have that risk that's gonna happen to you possibly yeah and you know what's kind of bad People use on the internet all the people. The people have been killed, right? They've used their past against them in the trial, which I kind of oh, thought was fucked up. That is fucked. They're like, oh yeah, w- the people he killed, like the people who were for Kyle, they'll go, oh yeah, well the two people he killed, one's a pedophile and one uh, was a woman beater. Mm-hmm. I seen the same thing. Yeah, and I it's hate like it. now you know, rape, child molestation. That's fucking horrible you need to be in prison you need to be fucking locked away get the fuck away from everybody but do you deserve death it's a tough situation my, my thing is it doesn't excuse someone oh God, from killing it doesn't excuse kyle from killing someone yeah. like he did kill someone and he has to live with that oh yeah. i think he's innocent wouldn't that fuck you up i think he's innocent but you have to understand man you killed people yeah you they'll never walk again they'll never wake up again yeah they're fucking gone forever they're gone Gone. Kyle, you killed two people, man. Yeah. You're innocent of any crimes, but you killed two people, and you have to wake up every day knowing that. Oh, he does. You know That's my do. thing. Yeah. I know these fucking nats. These fucking nats. I want to fucking Kyle Rittenhouse these nats. Yeah. Oh, dude, the memes have been great. The memes have been fucking hilarious. Man. The I ones are like, oh, we're going to riot in the, in the town that this all happened. They're like, okay, we'll just let Kyle back out. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> That's a bad one. That was a meme. He's 17, too. He's yeah, so dude, young. Sucks. He's it so sucks. young. And I know it's a shitty situation, dude. I was a punk in 17. I, you know, like part of me does feel bad. I for don't him. think he was a punk, dude. He did. You got to remember, bro. Like he honestly did an amazing job. Let's let, let's think about this. Right. He wasn't trigger happy. He wasn't trigger happy. He was aware of every fucking moment. He was adrenaline was rolling. He kept making smart decisions in chaos situations. Like, oh, this is happening. I'm getting chased by a mob. I'm getting beat up. But what do I need to continue to do? Keep pushing forward to turn myself into the police. That's that's good. And then the guy who had a gun, the guy had a gun. Mm-hmm. And he shot him one time in the arm. And he shot him one time knowing he's no longer a threat. He very well could have been. The dude could have been like, ah, and just been like, bam, 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 with his other hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the guy was fucked. AR-30 to the fucking arm. It's vaporized, like he said in court. But Kyle didn't go trigger happy on him. He didn't kill that guy. That's mm-hmm. a smart shot. That's a smart shot. And the and it, same thing with the other guys. He shot him twice or once, and that was he shot the one guy once in the stomach. He didn't go trigger happy on him. It's one as a self-defense. Even in that photo, he didn't even have his finger on the trigger. Whereas the, the prosecutor did in court. You know, that's some shit that's just like, the dude is smart. Mm-hmm. He, yeah, he might be. He's a, only 17 and he still needs more experience. He, you he's know, dumb in the situation. In fact, going there in the first place with the mindset that he had. You know what I mean? He should have had a more realistic expectation. That's probably right. your argument of where his 
decision making probably could have been a little better. He's innocent in my opinion, like you're saying yeah. though, still. Yeah. But in a moment of chaos and craziness, I applaud the dude for how well he did. My dumbass, I'm spraying. Someone innocent's getting fucking shot mm-hmm. because I'm panicking. I'm about to get and see, but that's why I don't have a gun. Don't worry, guys. Shmay doesn't have a gun. Because here's another fucking crazy thing. I believe if you have mental illness, you shouldn't have a gun. Mm-hmm. So if you're a little sad, I don't think you should have a gun. Because, A, I don't want you to kill yourself. You know what I mean? But should you be able to protect yourself against someone? You know what I think should happen with rioters and people? Mm -hmm. They should use the rubber bullets. If you motherfuckers want to shoot everybody with shit. I I don't. (coughs) Man, it's the rioters, too. It's like, what are you trying to accomplish by burning businesses down? Oh, dude. I don't don't understand. uh, What's the guy's name from Saturday Night Live? Is it Michael Che? Yeah, the guy who had the special on HBO. Yeah, he's Jovens, funny. go watch that shit on HBO. What's his name again? Michael Che. Michael Che. It's brand new on Netflix. It's like 55 minutes long. That shit's hilarious. And he had a little talk about the riots and stuff. And uh, he was saying that it was the best time to be a black man because you can go in and steal shit. But he didn't do it because, uh, I think because he was sick or something or he didn't feel good. Yeah. And how his grandparents would have been upset with him because it's like uh, – he was comparing it to like the march, the marches with Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm. Like if like if his ancestors didn't go to the marches because they didn't feel good. Like that's how he was kind of comparing it. It was fucking funny. He's a funny dude. That special actually kind of uh, took me back because I was like, oh, this is going to be okay. And it was really good. Go check it out. I will check that out. That sounds so interesting. Yeah. I forget what it's called, but it's brand new. It'll be on your new. And then the, another thing on it is like the race relations aspect. How is it race related at all? Well, I see some people bring it in with like, oh, when other people get killed and acu- uh, and like people get charged for shit or don't get charged and innocent people are killed and nothing happens or some other shit. I hate the hypotheticals too. Yeah. What if he was a black man? Yeah. Don't go what ifs. I really ifs. didn't dive too much into all that. Don't do what ifs. Like that's not I just, what happened. I keep it zoned in on what event happened. On and what events occurred to make that event happen? Yeah, I was in watching, that moment of time, I was watching a CNN analyst say that thing, and I was yeah. like, "Why are we even bring up hypotheticals like that? Yeah, I don't Just know. stick to the facts." I don't know. It's a crazy world, dude. And the Second Amendment, it's tough. Yeah, all around, it's a tragedy. You know, like yeah, a hundred percent. You want to avoid stuff like that. That's why I don't go to riots. I don't go to. Anywhere there's danger, I'm not about it. Just like with the Travis Scott concert, dude, and we were talking about that today. The Suicide Boys were like, yo, if anyone falls down, Help pick them up. up. And that was a week before the Travis Scott shit, which is real interesting because uh, I saw this new thing about this lawsuit. They're getting hit with like a $2 billion or $3 billion lawsuit. Holy Him shit, and Drake. dude. $2 yeah. Billion? yeah. Something and like Drake? That. Yeah. And uh, apparently they were – to make the most they could and they cut corners and costs for shit that put the people in danger so it's like shit shit that's tough but again why are people being so fucking crazy man yeah. crazy times all this shit shit's gonna hit the fan soon maybe maybe it already is maybe it always will yeah and the, another thing too is like we're so racially diverse as a country compared to other countries yeah. that i don't think could handle the same stuff you know Poland and Belarus. P- Poland is right next to Germany, and then Belarus is right east of mm-hmm. uh, east of Poland, and Russia's east of uh, east of Belarus. But the Belarus dictator, he said, you know what? All these migrants from Iraq, Syria, uh, all the Middle Eastern countries where they've been displaced because of all this stuff going on over there, the Belarus president or dictator, he's been a president since 1994. How much of a president are you? When you've been president for like that many years. It's called dictator. A hundred percent. He was like, you know what? I'm going to send them all to Poland. He's weaponized migrants. He's mm. using migrants as a weapon in a way. And he's saying, hey, instead of going to Belarus, we're just going to push all of you to Poland. And Poland is having the tear gas and water cannon. Mm. Migrants is this happening right now? Right now. And they're doing all this at the border of Belarus and Poland. Shit is hitting the fan. 3,000 to 4,000 migrants Mm -hmm. all coming through from Iraq, Syria, all these countries that they've been displaced from. And Belarus is using that as a military tactic in a way. And they're saying, because Poland's part of the European Union. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, yo, fuck it. Because they're doing economic sanctions to try to make Belarus change. 
mm-hmm. because of their government. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, you guys want to put economic sanctions and hurt my trade? I'm going to send all these migrants through because that's not an act of war. I'm not doing anything but sending them. And it's like, yeah, Poland, are you going to step up? Because if it, the United States was in the same situation, it'd be like, why are you turning all away all these migrants or refugees? Mm-hmm. And Poland is like tear gassing and spraying these people away, and they're having to force them back into Belarus. Like, to it's just like people are really critical about the United States, but we're put in situations that other countries are now just dealing with, in a way, or like that they're experiencing. I don't know about that one. It's just other like, countries are experiencing way harder shit that we never experienced, and they've been experiencing it forever. You know what I mean? Just as far as like migrants though and migration, yeah. like well look what well what is this that's all like similar to China, and all the shit with China that we were talking about. What okay, well, yeah I guess so I guess so yeah, Cha- like taking over because China wants the Taiwan, but Taiwan has all the they have their freedoms, mm-hmm. so if they go back underneath the China regime they're gonna lose their freedoms all those people. And then that's why China's putting harder strength, uh, sanctions on Australia, making yeah. it harder for them to get their stuff. But that's just, dude, that's just crazy shit in the world. That's crazy shit. That's like a whole. I, fucking, I'm not saying, but people aren't saying Poland's evil. People aren't saying, oh, Poland's. I don't even so know bad, about all that. You know what I mean? So bad for turning people away, mm-hmm. miss human rights violations. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it would be. I don't know, man. You got a good point, though. Maybe I am being a little overcritical, but it's just like. Man, I feel just bad for the migrants yeah. that are it, like in the tug of war of that whole conflict going yeah. on. Shit's hitting the fan all over the world. Mm-hmm. That's sad. That's some sad shit. What do you think they should do about it? Uh, what they should do about it? They need to. Well, that's. It is tough. <laughs> just like what they should do about all the people from South America and Honduras and all the countries that have been affected. Uh-huh. It is tough. And like, you know, Joe Biden and like everybody having to take migrants and then people being mad and like all the wall scenarios. Do you mm-hmm. know immigration policies? That stuff is like now. I'm Poland, not smart enough to know all that. Now Poland is experiencing those immigration policies. It's not so easy, is it, guys? Because there's no simple solution to that. And I agree. It's not just like a freaking easy answer. Yeah. And I feel bad for even the South American, everybody coming south of the border. I feel so bad for them having to deal with that expedition just to get here and yeah. then have to deal with all that craziness. Yeah. So it the whole world and the global scheme of things, like, it is insane. Yeah. Dude, I went through some mistaken car identity. Do you know what that is? What the fuck? We're getting overloaded, dude. Mm-hmm. This is annoying. Mm-hmm. I'm about to burn this whole house down. Yeah, burn this whole house down. It's time to burn. God, it's because my mom keeps her coffee over there in her office. But can can splitting the offices with the offices, burn it down. But uh, yeah, have you ever had mistaken car identity? No. Do you know what that is? I don't know what that is. Either. I made it up. I think I'm walking out of Target, and you know I'm in the morning. I'm all get my coffee. I'm a little stoned up. I'm still a little groggy waking up, and I walked to this car that I thought was mine. It looked just like mine. It was the same car. And then so I'm unlocking it. I'm trying to open it, you know? And I'm like, why is it my fucking car? And then I look inside. Like, I actually just, like, look in the windows because, you know, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. And it's not my shit. It's a whole <laughs> – it's someone else's car. Luckily, no one else was around. I was like, oh, because it, I felt like, oh, my God, I look like I'm breaking into this car now. That's not mine. And luckily the car alarm didn't go off. I shit my pants, and then I had to, and then I went and found my car. Your car is a common car, though. A lot of people have your car. Have you ever done that? Have you ever done anything like that? Well, I've haven't got that far to where I was like trying to open the door. Yeah, I'm like, why isn't my door? And then I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, I've never done that. I felt like an idiot. I was like, it'd be funny if the person whose car that was was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Hey, get the fuck away from my car, man. I'd be like, oh shit, dude. Yeah. It really, my stomach dropped. I was like, oh, I felt horrible. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, mistaken car identity. A little bit of the MCI. Dude, where's my car? <laughs> dude, you know what I, oh, did you hear about Max Holloway, dude? We need to talk about Max fucking Holloway. How he's badass? One of the, probably the greatest to ever do it. 100%. Dude. I love the blessed. He's Mr. 3000. 
Mm-hmm. He's the only UFC fighter. Sorry. Twitch YouTube fam. We're dealing with some issues today. <laughs> okay? Bear with us. We're going to have this fixed. Roll on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Max Holloway, dude. Only fighter to have total 3,000 strikes. Total strikes. Uh, most significant strikes, dude. Look at this. Right now, he's number one with 2,848. Next are two fighters that are almost going to retire soon. Frankie Edgar, he's got 1,799. Holy shit. Who's the next after that? Donald Cerrone at 1,727. They're so far behind Max, dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is crazy. Yeah. Dude, Max Holloway just be- – he kills, he batters. Be- he takes a lot of damage, too, in his fights. That's why Max? I- yeah. He's never been knocked down, but he takes. How damage. long can he do it for? I know he take. He's dude. He's the most durable UFC fighter. Yeah, he's never been knocked down in all his fights. Uh, he's only twenty nine, and the, he and he's here. You know what I mean? That's insane. BJ Penn, his prime, his peak it was early. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this guy could. He's just been. In, he's a, such a warrior. Yeah. He's legendary. Yeah. I can't wait to see who he fights next. It's tough. Does he fight Alex next, you know, for a third time, even though he's 0-2? Alex said he'd give him the fight. And yeah, Ir Rodriguez even boosted his stock in oh, that fight. Oh, God, yeah. You dude. know what I'm saying? They both put on a show. Max Holloway's insane, dude. It's insane. I would love for him to become champ again. Mm-hmm. It'd be so cool. You know what I wanted to do, though? I wanted to do a little breakdown for Sean's upcoming fight. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, Jobin's returning December 11th, dude. How many weeks is that? Shit. Two? It's it's three. close. Three. Yeah, it's coming up. Under three. It's under three weeks, dude. December 11th, Sean O'Malley versus Hylian Hiley, Paiva. The dude's a fucking Brazilian mixed martial artist. I got a little thing about him. He's 26 years old. He's 5'8". Uh, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He's from Team Alpha Male. Oh. He's fun. 21 and 3. Uh, his wins, he's got four TKOs, he's got three subs, he's got 14 decisions. So he's a decision guy. His losses, he's got one and all. He's been TKO, he's been sub, and he's got a decision. He's on a three-fight win streak. Uh, he lo- he last fought Kyler Phillips, who a lot of people argued Kyler won. It was a really close fight. Oh, he fight beat Kyler Phillips? By decision. And it Damn. was a really close. Dude, so in that fight, what I learned from him, from watching that fight, Paiva, he's got a good chin. He's got good cardio. Those are his two good things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, he's a black belt. You know, when you're a black belt, you got good jiu-jitsu. Amazing jiu-jitsu. So he's got those, right? But Kyler hit him. Kyler kicked him in the fucking head. Kyler dropped him. If Kyler can land on him, Sean can land on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 100%. And a lot of people underestimate Sean's fucking jiu-jitsu. But he's in there all the time practicing constantly, and he's going up the ladder. And he's training with Tim Welch, mm-hmm. who's honest. He, dude, that's got to be one of the best black jiu-jitsu, black belt jiu-jitsu art guys in the game. It's good to have that as a background. Anton Kino, the guy that, they, that Tim learns from and everything, Sean's got an excellent program with that. With, Tom's, or with, Sean, with Sean's stand-up, do you think that he even needs to – if he just learned how to do the – like so Kamaru he, Usman defense, like, sprawls? Yeah. He might not even He's need to that. ever use yeah, I wish his jujitsu because then he could just keep you standing yeah. the whole time and just m- to pick you apart. I wish I'd love to see some flying jujitsu from Sean because he's stylish like that, and I feel like his jujitsu. We never get to see it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I feel like his jujitsu would be stylish too, so it'd be kind of flying. Lightning so. quick too, dude. Yeah. It'd be fun to see some people just get fucking put down. I'm gonna shoot all these ads, dude. Mm-hmm. It's driving me fucking insane. But. Yeah, I'm really excited for this one. People are keep saying that Sean fights cans, and I don't agree with it. Because how are you a can? How many fights in the UFC? 21 and 3. I think he's had like maybe four or five. That's good. That's good. I think five. Maybe six. Dropping them. I didn't, I didn't look. RIP on that one. Sorry, Jovens. But he's 21 and 3. That's not a can. That's an up-and-comer. And, comer. and yeah. a win over Kyler Phillips is huge. Kyler's looked amazing. He's an animal. Even though a lot of people think Kyler won, that's a scrap that they need to run back. In fact, after Sean gets this one, Kyler can have another rematch. So, boom, there you go. Yeah. And didn't they call someone a can crusher when it's like Eddie Wineland was a legend himself? Yeah. And he looked like a can. Maybe yeah. it's not his fault he makes people look like cans. Yeah. 100%. 100%. 
hundred percent, hundred percent. It's uh, it's gonna be really exciting. Uh, Tent, they keep saying that his striking's on point. He's looking real good, so that's always exciting to hear. Mm. And it's always cool because every fight, Sean just looks improved. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Five eight five nine. So he's a little short. Height. Uh, yeah, the he's a little, sh- a little, he's a little shorter than Sean. You use Sean's that reach? listed at five ten. Hey, come on. I don't know about that. <laughs> I stood next to the guy. I don't know about him being 5'10". Oh, I'm, I'm just kidding. But, yeah, he's got the height on him. He's definitely probably got the reach 100%. And he's got the skills. He's got the looks. He's got the everything. December 11th is going down. You fucked. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to be. I'm calling. Since he's got good cardio, piva has got good cardio and a good chin. I think they're going to stand and bang. How long can he take Sean's shots? That's my question. You know. Um, my prediction is going to be a decision mm-hmm. because of the the heart that Python's going to show. Piva? Piva. He's mm-hmm. going to show like M- M- Mootenhose did. Mm-hmm. And he's just going to get battered. Yeah. Like, well, if that if it goes to decision, we're going to see another fucking performance that Sean had against Chris. It, that's my prediction yeah. is that yeah. he's going to get battered. Sean's going to put some more work in. And he's going to be pissed because he'll be yeah. like, I tried knocking him out. I'm sorry yeah. that people don't. Because they're tough guys. Some people Sean's are tough. Knock out. I think Sean's going to knock this dude out. Mm-hmm. I think this one's a knockout. But, dude, some people just don't get knocked out. You know, when they first I think it's going to be a first-round knockout. And I think it's going to be a, a cold knockout. I'd be cool with the decision if it was yeah. the same as the last one. Mm-hmm. Just because of how much he just picked that dude apart. It is, and it's fun to watch. It's so, it's fun, so to watch. fun to watch. Doing the dribbling moves. Oh, yeah. And then piecing up somebody. What's he going to do this time? I wonder what he's going to do this I, time. And the, oh, dude. And then the Thomas I made a fight before that when he uh, fucking dro- hit him in the yeah. late. That was sick. Good episodes, man. Good episodes. So it's like if it's an yeah. early finish or a late finish, it's going to be exciting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's the main. It, it's weird how the UFC keeps putting the main uh, the, you know, the main fight on the first fight of the night. I don't know why they keep <laughs> doing that with Sean. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good true. Yeah. December 11th, though. Um, I think it's going to be a good fight. I think mm-hmm. it's going to be a good fight. I'm excited. And then we'll see what happens after that, dude. Who knows? Who knows? Everything's been blowing up. That's insane. But yeah, ooh. How much time we got? Where are we at? Okay. All right. uh, who, so potential matchup between, I like this one, Justin Gaethje and Islam. Mm, who, man. What do you think? I got Islam. You got Islam? I got Islam. Because he just beat Dan Hooker. Yeah, made it look easy. Dan Hooker's tough. Yeah. And he made it look easy. Yeah. But what if Justin stopped? What if Justin did this? Uh, stopped his takedowns, and then Islam couldn't handle the striking. And then what if Justin fucking knocked out Islam? How crazy would that be? That'd be nuts. You know who everyone's lo- overlooking? I think Islam gets it though. Charles Oliveira. Everybody's overlooking that man. Dude, I'm feeling Dustin on that one. Mm-hmm. You think Charles gets it easy? He's gonna get him. You think so? We'll see. And then Justin's really fucked. Dude, that's not... Oh, my God. We're getting so close. That's going to be such a good card. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. I'm sad because some of the... All the Jobins, want, they want me to go with them to the fights, you know? But which is with the circumstances I'm going with my dad, I'm not going to be able... I don't think I'm going to be able to do it this time. But Sean's next fight, I think, next year. Mm-hmm. I think we... Ne- sometime next That'd year, we, we can definitely make it happen. 100%. Dude, Fuck. and the thing, Justin Gaethje was talking shit on Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira finished Tony Ferguson. Mm-hmm. And, like, Justin Gaethje had a great fight with him, mm-hmm. but Charles made it look a way easier. Was that after Justin? Yeah, it was after Justin. Oh, okay. At the same time, okay. it's the same Tony. Okay. And if anything, Tony wanted they to win say, more. They Tony always, wanted to win more after losing. They always say that people are not the same after they fight Justin. So, I'm actually interested. Who did he just fight again? Who did just, uh, Michael Chandler. Chandler. Yeah, so now I'm interested to see who uh, how Michael who, Chandler Who was. also Charles Oliveira knocked out, yeah. and uh, Justin couldn't. So you got Islam? I think I got Islam, too. I got Islam winning. Islam doesn't beat. That's a main... That's a, do you think that's a that's a fight of the night, oh. like, main main fight? Islam's actually... I said he doesn't beat Charles. He might be next champ. He might Dude, be next Charles up. versus Islam would be so good. Because it's deep. It, his wrestling's so good, and he's so it's, tight. It's weird how just when you think the UFC can't get any better, it does. And the fights get more interesting. The fights are crazier. Oh, I love it. It's the best sport. It's the best organization in the world, and MMA is the best sport. Boop. Uh, you want to hear some drama about Masvidal and Connor? I thought this was all kind of interesting. I'm listening. So, Masvidal is supposed to fight Leon Edwards, right? Mm-hmm. Then gets hurt. 
Hurt. Backs out. Because it's all this drama about Colby and uh, and Masvidal, right? Well, Connor went, they went on a little uh, Instagram or Twitter back and forth talking shit, right? And Masvidal is saying because, uh, because Masvidal and Leon didn't fight each other, Connor apparently, this is where I think it's interesting. So Paradigm Sports are the ma- the managers of the fighters, you know, so they're under the same management. Uh-huh. And it's alleged that Connor owns part of the ownership of that company. So how fucked is it, like, when you're Leon Edwards or any other fighter that's under that management, a little bit of your fight purse goes to Connor McGregor? Isn't that crazy? Well, Dre only met Easy's payday, like, you know, it's been in the rap game, too. Oh, like, I thought you were going to keep going own, with some of the bars. Just Damn. A, well, no, I wasn't. But owning labels and stuff is the same. Like, yeah. hey, bitch. I know. Hey, bitch, you, yeah. Leon. But hey, you, are you upset? No, Maybe no. you should buy a promotion or an agency that represents fighters and own it. Well, no, it's because that fight went uh, broke, went out, you know, that the fight wasn't going to happen. That Connor missed and that company missed out on a good paycheck because it would have been, like, one of the best paychecks. Yeah. So it's. In, I thought. I don't know. I thought it was real interesting. And uh, Masvidal is claiming that Connor's gonna snort himself to death, and he's gonna, he's gonna be a bitter old man that snorts himself to death. No. He's going hard, dude. Jorge is gonna be irrelevant soon. Yeah. I wonder what's gonna happen with Connor. That leg's fucked, dude. Well, Dustin's a great fighter too. But look though. at Silva. You know? Look at Silva and the way he's rebounded with his leg. He's not even in the UFC. I know, but he's been looking really good on boxing. You got to be on your feet. I know no one's kicking you in boxing, but you got to move around and shit. At least he can move around. Just fuck. He, hey, he's getting paid. That's what's that's what's important. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then Masvidal. I thought this was crazy too. Masvidal kind of. He's like, oh, if he wants to fight Leon in March now, right? So apparently he's not running from Leon, and apparently he is really hurt. But he's saying if Leon says no, then it's then it, uh, it'll be Colby's bitch ass. Colby wrecks you. Jorge. Yeah, that's the fight. I honestly want to see Masvidal and Colby more than I want to see Masvidal. And- Give Leon the shot. Give Leon the title shot. He deserves that shit. And make that fucking co-main Colby and fucking Masvidal. And tell me how good that card is. Jorge only got as far as he did because he beat up Ben Askren, who was already pretty much past his prime. And then he beat. And then he beat freaking. Who'd he beat right at? Nate Diaz, mm-hmm. who's like, let's be real. He beat Conor McGregor because he's bigger. Mm-hmm. Okay? Nate Diaz isn't legendary, the greatest, greatest of all time. He's a great, he's a, he is legendary. Mm-hmm. But to say GOAT, you know, champion level dude, no. Mm-hmm. And Jorge, you aren't either. And Colby is. The only reason Colby's not champ is because Kamara Usman is. Dan, Dan, Dana White said it himself. Usman's just legendary, so he's there and he screws you over. It's like Michael Jordan being there. Sorry, Charles Barkley, you're not gonna be champ. That's life. Jorge Damn. though, Jorge's People not even Charles Barkley. Pod. Jorge's not even Charles Barkley. So that's true. He if he fights Colby, he gets wrecked. One more thing for me. One more thing. I'm gonna switch it up on you. Uh, did, remember the Hamzat versus Jack Ranson video we were Ooh. watching? Yeah, dude, that's... Hamzat looked fucking massive. And he was just throwing Jack around like a fucking little little toddler. He picked him up. Yeah, like a little brother. Yeah. Like, you took you ate my fucking sandwich. You ate my fucking sandwich, and just fucking threw him around. That's impressive, dude. Hamzat. That's gonna be really interesting. Anyone from Russia and Dagestan? Yeah. Over there. What they do? They're dangerous. What's he? A, what's he a product of? What they do to his embryo? That's a superhero. Well, he has that cleft lip too. He's had to fight adversity his whole life. Whole life. Probably. He said, "I remember seeing that video where they said that when he was a kid, his town got blown up by bombs, and then they rebuilt most of his life, mm-hmm. and then they got blown up again. So it's like that is Bane. He's Bane. But he seems like he was a good born guy. in the dark. Yeah, he seems like a good guy. <laughs> he's not a bad guy. Yeah, no, this is <laughs> just not a villain in the UFC. He's fucking Bane. He's Bane. He'll kill anyone. Yeah, well, we need, who's Batman? Who's Batman to this guy? I don't know if it's Kumaro. I don't know if it's fucking Glover Texara. Or no, hold on. That's light heavyweight. He fights welterweight and middleweight. Middleweight champ is Izzy. Oh, God, I'd love to watch that one, too. Yeah. Hamza and Izzy? Oh, shit. 
I got I'm Hamza. Not, yeah. I got Hamza. Oh, and you're an Izzy boy. Well, Izzy ain't ready for it. I seen Izzy against Jan, bo- and he couldn't handle the wrestling. And dude, and this guy's a superior wrestler. And he's huge. And he's huge. Izzy would probably should retire if that guy Ooh. calls him out. Don't don't fight him. You'll lose. I will put all my money on. Well, that. shit. Now that Glover is the light heavyweight champion, Izzy can go try that again. He will lose to Glover. Yeah, it'd be worse probably. It'd be worse, and because Glover's meaner yeah. on the ground, Izzy'd get busted up. Stay where you're at, little man. Yeah. I don't say little man; he's big, <laughs> but he thought he could go up, and it just wasn't happening. John Jones would have killed him too if they'd have fought. And yeah, like you were saying, John Jones is supposed to be wrestling somebody, but that guy was saying that they haven't signed anything yet. And yeah, he, I saw that too with uh, Jack Jack he, Hager. It, Hager. He, and he wants money, so. Or Jack Jack Hager. We'll see. Yeah. Well, it was supposed to be like December 11th. Dude, John Jones has been going through shit. He got he got kicked out of uh, Mike Jackson's gym. And he trains with Henry Sejudo now? Yeah, yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. We'll see how that is. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. He's, at least he's staying positive about it. Maybe it was like a mutual thing. I don't know. I didn't read too much, but. I was like, damn, John Jones is really going through a lot. He needs to stop getting in trouble, and I don't know. I think he should just retire. Yeah. On top. You know, didn't lose at the end. Never be a heavyweight. Just don't be a heavyweight. God, there was so much hype behind that. It fell through. It's sad. It's sad. That's a sad one. It's kind of a sad UFC story. (laughs) Good thing we got Sean keeping this shit interesting like a motherfucker, dude. Thank God. You got anything you want to talk about? Anything last off before we go to episode 54? Man, just... Thanks to all the Jobins. Thanks yeah. to the sponsor. And just yeah. Thank the you. Fucking shirt yeah, dude. These hoodies, dude. Jobins. Now, I'm a big boy. I'm a 3X tall shirt kind of guy. But Tim, Sean, these guys, they don't get that size. This is a 2X, and it actually surprisingly fits. And the material's really fucking comfy. The sweatpants, dude, they hug the ankles. Like they cut, like they hug them, and it's like really comfy and shit. Mm-hmm. It feels cool, and then it's like real loose up the leg and up the thighs. It's a good athletic look. You yeah, know? I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like my Jobin hoodie, yeah. the Timbo Sugar Jobin hoodie, maroon. Yeah. And I like my black shirt with the fourteen and O sugar. Yeah. With the doing the basketball Dude. shit, he was schooling on them. All Sean's merch, like it's seriously legit. I think he has the best merch in the game, just like the best file style in the game. But yeah, Jobins, go get your Can Crusher merch real quick. Go get that shit. Link in the bio. Everything. Thank you, Jobins, for supporting us. We fucking love you guys. Uh, Jobins to the fucking moon. We love all you viewers. Thank you for watching and supporting us. Uh, We're going to close this bitch out and kill all these motherfucking gnats before my head explodes. 100%. So, yeah. Deuces, Jobins. Deuces. Have a good day.